My guest is not on, though. Holy shit, let's see. Come on, Gianna, you can figure out how to do it. Get on your cell phone. <laughs> hey, it may just be all of us. Maybe I'll bring one of you guys in if worse comes to worse, all right? Merry Christmas to you, too, doll. You and your family. Love it. Oh, my sister's on here, and she knows I have a thing for monkeys. So before I get going, because, you know, this is the original monkey that Gina gave me. It's my very... Jeffrey, what's going on? Uh, no, Muhammad, you can't be in my video. I don't know you. That's the way it works, okay? Uh, Muhammad. Guy goes, I want to be in your video. D, D, what's going on? This is the original monkey. But my sister sent me this monkey. I don't know. Apparently, it was a big thing with kids. I don't have kids. I have The only baby I have is my freaking guitar. But you turn this on. His name is Giuseppe. See? You go, hello, hello. Is he? Is he? Is he? I don't know. Oh, there's Gianna. Stay there, Gianna. Don't go anywhere. I know. All right. We're going to see what happens here. All right. Gianna's on. Yeah, this is the, the monkey. I don't know. I got to get rid of the fucking monkey. All right. The monkey. I'm done with the monkey. But my sister saw Giuseppe. Oh, God. I got a lot to talk about. I got to tell you, because a lot of shit's been going on. Wait, I'm stepping on wires. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just the way it is. Oh, Mike. Mike. Hi, Mike. I love you. I love you, Mike. Oh, and the ever amazing franchise dude, Tom Scarda. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. Um, okay. I do have a lot to talk about today. Um, oh, chef. Chef, chef Vincenzo Papiano. Oh, I get so hungry when I say your name. Okay. Chef, you better watch next week. We're going to have, uh, the owner of Patsy, Sal, who's the head chef and the owner there. You'll, you'll love it. Ciao. Mwah. Check out the show next week, too. Joseph, what's going on? Thanks for watching, people. So I got to tell you, I'm a little twisted. Uh, I, it's crazy. Some crazy shit's going on out there. Mary Ellen, what's cooking? Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. You know how it works. We do shout outs in the beginning. You're more than welcome to ask my guests any questions. And then um, we do shout outs at the end. That's the way it goes. Um, so here's the deal. I don't know if you people know this, but, um, I'm sure you will. Thanks. Thanks, Vincenzo, Chef Vincenzo. Christmas Eve for Italians is a big deal because we have what's called the Feast of the Seven Fishes, which means we make seven fishes. Well, we used, I used to. Gina, I know. Stop playing with your hair, Marianne. Um, we don't, I don't make, I make two fishes now because mom's no longer here. My mom was here. Mom was like amazing with the fishes. Me, I'm not so good with the fishes, right? Um, so here's the thing. PETA, the organization, has put up a huge billboard somewhere in South Jersey along a strip where there are at least 12 amazing seafood restaurants. Pat Jennings, thank you for watching. Asa, oh, grazie tanti, Asa. And thank you for nominating me and Tammy Pescatelli to host the Oscars this year. <laughs> I just did a video tweet on that on, on Twitter for you, Asa, so you'll catch that in a bit. Tom, what's going on? Hola, hola. So here's the thing that's twisted me. Peter put up a billboard that said, Eddie Earl, Eddie, two names, my buddy Earl. I love you. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, Gina, yes, I do hear you. It's like you're like, it's like you're like, I can't even say the word, but you're like a, a, a god of some kind that just comes in my head. It's like, 
Whoa, it's like, look, this is your father. Look, it's your father. Okay, Eddie, what's going on? <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm trying to get to my point. Mike, hey, Mike, D, is this the original Mike Marino who wants to be the freaking president, the funny Mike Marino? Because Mike Marino, your ass is getting on this show. Remember, we got to talk about that. Maybe January, things settle down. Teresa, thanks. All right, I got to get to my point here because I got a lot of shit to say. Hey, Sammy, thanks for joining, baby. All right, so Peter put up a, a billboard in South Jersey that said, fishes have feelings too, and they feel pain. Now look, I'm not trying to make fun of anybody who's vegan. I understand, you know, to hurt something is painful. I don't want to hurt anything. I get that. I really do. Oh, wait a minute. I have, oh, I don't know if you guys, oh yeah, I don't need to hear you, so you can hear me. But, um... What's bothering me is that I have to put these on. I hate being tethered, but I, I'm going to do it. Okay, I'm on. Get on, Lord. Rejoice. Thanks for joining, love. Thank you. Okay, so they put up this sign that said, um, stop your tradition of eating seven fishes because fishes have feelings too and have a vegan dinner instead. Are you freaking kidding me now? Don't you think enough is enough? Can't we just eat one thing we want? I mean, bad enough. Everything is gluten-free, this free, that free. All this bullshit. People doing a, what? A keto's diet, paleo. All this, just freaking eat normal shit, all right? You're right, Eddie. This is the way it works. If it walks on the ground, if it swims in the ocean, and if it grows out of the ground, you eat it. Don't eat shit that comes out of a box, okay? But they had to do this big thing. About, and, and, and I feel bad for the restaurants out there. Hey, Joyce, big freaking thing about seven fishes. Peter's having a fit. Knock it off. Do you see us putting signs up saying, hey, stick this in your freaking mouth and eat it now? It's a big drumstick or some shit? Well, maybe ShopRite does that with turkeys. I don't know. But I'm just saying, anyway. So Peter pissed me off. I didn't like that whole thing, okay? Um, but now, here's something really interesting. And you know what's even funnier? Uh, you're absolutely right. Mike, you're right. Yes, Jean, screw them all. Aw, oh, Shauna, thank you. That, you made my day, honey. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate that. Okay, so here's the other thing that's pissing me off now, right? With the holidays. And I, I wrote this shit down this morning because I was like, are you serious? This is all the shit's going on? First of all, and, and it all, I, I'm, I don't know where any of you live. I know where some of you live, which is bad. <laughs> but I don't know where all of you live. And I apologize in advance because I'm not trying to insult anyone. That's it, Gene. We're going to make them swim with the fishes for sure. Uh, that was a good one. Um, but it all happens. All of these things that I'm about to tell you are happening in the heartland. So maybe too much corn. I don't know. Maybe too much corn, too much beef. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, Mark, thanks for joining, Tom. So here's the deal. A principal in this school actually said <laughs> that you can't put up Christmas decorations. Dawn, thanks, Dawn, for joining. Um, Mark, thanks. Can't put up Christmas decorations, and you cannot put up candy canes because when you turn the candy cane upside down, it looks like a J, and J means Jesus. Okay, right now. So what does that mean? Why, why? Oh, oh, and then here, oh, just so you know, they fired that principal. I'm so happy somebody had the balls to go to nudes, whatever the freak it is, he's got to, yeah, to fire this little rat bastard. What, what, it resembles a J and, and it's Jesus. Stop it now. Jesus was born on Chris. That's the whole freaking idea. You get it? Oh, Christ. All right. All right. So that was, she was fired, thank God. But now... So think about it. All these religious things. No, no, no. But but SantaCon in New York City, you can do. SantaCon, you can do. Did you ever see SantaCon in New York City? It's horrible. You don't even want to... Angela, thanks. It's like you drive down in the city, you see all these freaking drunken, drunken Santas, right? What is that, Gina? A shepherd's crook. <gasps> oh, Gina's getting all down and biblical. It resembles a shepherd's crook. Or Peroni's disease. Either way, it's the same thing. But it's crazy. Um, Santa, 
Santa Con is okay to see all these drunks running around New York City, these kids, dressed like Santa, puking all over the place, right? Oh, but that, I call it Santa Christ, okay? That's what it is, Santa Christ, like Antichrist. That's what the Santa Con should be called because it's screwed up. Santa Christ, yes. And then here's the other one that pissed me off. This is the other thing that got me pissed. The schools don't want, if you're going to do pageants or little Christmas pageants or this or that and the other thing, none of the schools, only in the heartland, just remember the heartland. That's all I'm saying, the heartland. They don't want any of the kids. Alfonso, Mindy, thanks for joining. You can't use any religious songs. You like Santa Christ? I knew Asa likes Santa Christ. Santa Christ! Um, you can't do any, you can't do, so I looked it up this morning, okay? I wanted to know songs that had the name Jesus in it for a Christmas pageant. Guess what? None of them really do. They, they make mention of, it, uh, of, of something, but not, they don't say Jesus. There's a way in a manger, talking about the baby coming. They don't say Jesus. There's Silent Night. There's Do You Hear What I Hear? And I'm telling you right now, what I'm hearing, I'm not liking with these idiots, all right? And then it came upon a midnight clear. All right? Listen, if you people don't want this, then, then you know what? If you're a Buddhist, then write a song about a Buddha, about Buddha, all right? Or write a song, whatever you decide that you like to worship. Maybe you want to worship this freaking candle. Then write a song about a God damn, this Gretzia, this Fanchima Lord, the Tuarangul candle. All right? Oh, my God. I can't believe it. But you know what? Think about it. I thought of this, I thought of this this morning, and I was saying to myself, man, something ain't right. Something's kind of weird, if you ask me. Because you know what? When we were little, we all believed in Santa Claus. Right? We couldn't see him. But that was the magic of believing in something that wasn't there, right? Which is kind of like religion. Believing in something that isn't there, right? It's your faith. And we all loved Santa, right? Until we saw our father sitting there with our mother eating all the shit that we left out for the reindeer. Then we were like, oh man, this sucks. You mean to tell me Santa's not real? Holy shit. And then it... Hey, Nay, Bruno, what's up? Thanks for watching. Santa's not real. I can't believe it. All these years I left cookies and shit and I believed in Santa. And that. So, and then that's how life went wrong going forward. You see, because we believed in something magical that we couldn't see or touch. Kind of like a religion. It was Santa. All right? And then that's the way our religion went. But then when we knew Santa was a fake, everything went downhill. Everything went downhill. Okay? And then Disney created stuff that wasn't real. Like, oh, little girls, don't worry. You're all princesses and you're going to find a prince on a white freaking horse. No! Discrezia de svachima tu avangula lorda miserabola. No! It never worked out that way. It's not a fucking fairy tale. You get it? So that's what I'm saying with these people. Don't use a candy cane. If you put it upside down, it means Jesus upside down. Oh, please stop. It's Christmas, okay? And guess what? If you think about all the songs that we have, all of our songs have nothing to do with Jesus except those three I mentioned. And they don't even say his name. All of our songs are White Christmas. Um, I'll be home for Christmas. Grandma got ran over by a reindeer. Pretty fucking scary song in itself, don't you think? Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, God, help me and save the queen. All right. So I am ready to bring in my guest, uh, Caroline back to Rhode Island. Uh, Italian chicks are going back to Rhode Island in June at the Odium Theater on June 15th. Same day as last year, but this time it's a, it's a Saturday. And uh, in another, uh, I think it's Westerly, Long Island, we have something going down on that too. So I'll give you more information on that. Uh, it was a great time. I want to bring in my guest. I hope I can find her. I don't see her. Uh, so um, here, uh, let, me, let me get to her uh, intro here. Her name is Gianna Messina. Nice little, uh, you know, like uh, Midwestern name, don't you think? Um, she's an Italian-American, native New Yorker. She's a writer, a comedian. She got her start as a baby model. Typical Italian mother. Come on! 
Put the red ribbon on her, okay? <laughs> Um, her articles have appeared in Atlanta Style and Design and Dossier Magazines. Uh, she was also a contributing writer to TV, uh, TBS's Dinner in a Movie. She does stand-up. She has co-hosted No R- Rules USA Radio. Um, and she, she won something for the Guinness World Book of Records. I'm not sure what she did. I hope it wasn't pornographic, but I, we soon will find out. Let's see if we can get Gianna. Gianna, it's not allowing me to add you, honey. I don't know why. Oh, Gianna. Oh, Gianna, do you see me? Let me see. We're trying. Be, bear with me, friends. We're having little technical difficulties here. Gianna, oh, here we go. Oh, you did something, sweetheart, because now it says I can invite you. Oh, I invited you to watch. You weren't watching. Okay, so let's see. Maybe now that you're watching, I can get you in, you little... Cute little shit. Let me see. Wait. Oh, dear, Gianna. What's going on with you? Hmm. Okay, Gianna, go to the bottom of your screen. Turn your phone in um, landscape mode. Go to the bottom of your screen and invite yourself to this video. You can do it. I know you can. I trust and have faith in you. Come on, Dove. I see you're here, but you're not, it doesn't, it's not allowing me to add you because something is blocking it. I don't know what's blocking it, but something is. Caroline, thanks for joining. I'm trying to get my guest in here. We're having some technical difficulties, so bear with me. Uh, Okay, John, if you can hear me, tap the green button to the right of the comment section. Tap the green button to the right of the comment section. Thank you to my production assistant, Bruno, in Chicago, as they say. Not Chicago. Chicago. Because everything's with ago, like A. Chicago. Gianna, if you can hear me, tap the green button on the right of the comment section. Come on. You can do it. I know you can. Come on, girl. Gianna, are you still there? Where are you, sweetie? I saw you there before. I'm going to try to find you here. Let me see. Bear with me, guys. I'm sorry for this a little technical difficulty here. And I'm going to try to get her in. Uh, I'm trying a different way on this side here. Let's see if that works. Gianna. I'm going to add you oh adding you i hope it's working on your end it says it's adding i just want to see the word connecting and then i'll be a happy girl gianna it's trying to add you so there's something on your end that's missing are you seeing the invitation yes yes hey my god what happened i had a gremlin (laughs) i'm blaming it on the elf in the shelf he was he was uh (laughs) tormenting me in the spirit of of non-Christmas Christmas. How do you celebrate Christmas without celebrating Christmas? It, Can you imagine? I don't know where, you... th- where this is going to end. I mean, I, I, I think we are committed as a country to being mm-hmm. offended before we even set our foot out the door. What am I going to get pissed? <laughs> what am I going to be offended about today? Like, I, you know, I don't know. I, it's a slippery slope. It is, isn't it? But that's why I was laughing because it's like, you don't, you don't need to write material. You just need to listen to things around you. And you're like, you have to laugh at it. Otherwise you stab yourself in the eye with a fork. Yeah, absolutely. I I was, you know, of course, listening to your, to your intro about, about PETA and and fish. And I love animals. I I don't wear fur. I wear fake fur. It's so good now. I wear fake fur. Um, I can't look my cat in the eye and say you, yes, ferret. Meh, you know, uh, where do you draw right. the line? Um, <laughs> but if you, I feel like if you eat the animal, you know, and it's raised humanely, but it's funny with the fishes, uh, like you were saying, we're all down to two. Everyone got so late. Who's doing seven? I'd be up all right. night. Who I can do seven fishes? Who can do seven? And I don't know about you, but I'm fairly certain that by the time you get done with the appetizers, you're like, I'm not eating. I'm done, right? I'm done. Right? Thanksgiving, we had Italian appetizers because it's the law. Right. And really, Thanksgiving is not our holiday anyway. We're just here for the no. stuffing because you can put yeah. sausage in it. Right? right. Where's yes. the sausage? In the stuffing, I'm there. Done. Exactly. Uh, don't, 
don't get too authentic with the Thanksgiving. Uh, but uh, <laughs> it's too much. But yeah, we're down to two fishes. Like, and then with the appetizers, you, I don't want to eat like after that. So no, most no. most Italians are are pretty plant based. You know, for the occasional meatball, I know my picture has meatball in it. I, I ate the meatballs. I confess, I did. They were yes, good. Yes, I did too. Yes, the fabulous. Right. Cool. I mean, I can't even eat that out, though. I have to say, I can only eat it like someone's house if they have, you know, their grandmother. Right. You would make right. it. I, mm -hmm. I can't eat that stuff out. So I, you know, I, I feel for I the know. pita thing. I'm more annoyed with the religious stuff because you're either going to acknowledge it or you, you can't like be. Oh, I mean, look at Snoopy. They they had the whole thing on TV when we were little. And it was okay, and it was a sweet message. And today, right. I, I think it would be, I don't think it would ever see the light of day if they did it today. Because, You're absolutely right. Yeah. So. Uh, it's crazy. It's yeah. craziness. Yeah. Right? And, the, and the, right. the funny thing that you made me think about with the fishes is, is um, I am single. Uh, so occasionally, I'll look at some of the dating apps, and you see these guys pose with fish. Like, this yes. is, like. Like I'm on, you know, hunterandstream.com. I don't know why they're, they're always holding up a nice, a big bass or something. I'm like, oh, that's my guy. That's my guy. He's going to bring a stinky fish into the house. Like, where can I meet this one? I, this is what I want to tell these guys on these dating apps. And I don't do any dating material. I work hardly just because, you know, it's so well-worn track. Uh, right. I mean, what else is there to say? Except this, I will say this. If you want women to be attracted to you, Show yourself opening a dishwasher and emptying it and putting it away. Look, I, I put this in the right place. Right. Vacuum. Take the garbage. Look, honey, I can take the garbage out. Like, see, that I think women would be like, oh, yeah, he's handy. Yes. You know, yes. put, put a dimmer in or unclog, right. the, you know, unclog the Exactly. Sink. Now exactly. I know you're useful. The, the sea bass, I'm not with the sea bass. I can order my sea bass. I'm fine going to food town and... <laughs> whole paycheck and getting my sea bass there. If I'm eating sea bass, Peter don't hate me. I, I do buy humanely raised critters when I can, so. Good, see? Now my friend Asa is very funny. He just said, oh, talk about plenty of fish. Oh, I oh. <laughs> oh, right, plenty of fish. That site's off the, and that's, yeah, that site's well, I, I call, actually I call that site plenty of piece of deal. Yeah, plenty of people just, who do not pay for anything. And this guy's gonna right. pick up the check? I doubt it. Right, he, he right, they're pay. not, you would pay four ninety five for the for the membership. Why don't right. you buy your own coffee? That was like the worst day I ever had. I met the guy in a park and I bought my own lemonade. No, you did not. Yes, I did. And then I oh, walked I myself to the subway. I'm like, come on, get oh, the get really? the rule book. It's a cup of Please. coffee. It is. I know. I know. But it's scary. It's it is. It's very scary when you're single and you're trying. It's because there are no Prince Charmings anymore. There I really think are. there are a couple left. There are yes, a few. Yes, but they're hard to find. But they are hiding. They are yes, hiding. Yes, it's like you have to go through a Game of Thrones series before you could find them. Yes. You I know, know, like, oh, oh you're like, and, and, and you're like, oh, shit, this is, it really sucks. I know. My favorite comment that some of the guys, and I'll, I'll definitely not engage with any, with any of these folks, but they'll say um, things like, no drama. And I'm like, what? I'm a dra what if I'm a drama major? Right. I, I, first of all, I'm Italian. You are going to come. We, we come with drama. That's it. That we don't have well, any. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, Jana. My profile actually says on my dating profile, no drama unless it's a fucking opera. Okay. Right. That's it. All right. <laughs> That's it. Take me to an opera. I can deal with the drama. Right. Okay. <laughs> I get it. But doesn't everybody? Everybody has, you know, everybody has stuff. I have. Right. Yeah, everybody has flaws. I just happen to right. have very few. Very me few. Too. They're not me noticeable. Too. And you can usually cover them up with a little foundation and some powder. Yes. Done. Yes. I have flaws, but I use the elevator instead. So it's easier. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know. So I, wait a minute. I got to ask you some questions here. Yes. Um, how did you uh, become a baby uh, model? Oh, ba it's kind of a funny story. Um, but now, now I've teed it up. It's not like hilarious, but um, <laughs> my parents. <laughs> <laughs> Take two. Uh, my parents were living in Italy. Uh, in Florence. I'm, we're Sicilian, but they wanted, um, my dad was an artist, so they lived in Florence for a while. Had the family there, so I was born in Italy, uh, baptized in the Duomo, the whole nine yards. Nice. Came, came back to the U.S., and then they discovered, oh, you know what you need in the U.S.? Money. <laughs> <laughs> so they got an apartment, I think in the building that, <laughs> that they actually moved in with my grandmother, I think. 
uh, on 29th Street, where a lot of uh, Sicilians lived. And then they wanted to get their own place. And they were like, uh, what's John doing? Not a lot. So uh, <laughs> I think they had <laughs> friends in like the art world uh, or uh. Adver advertising and that kind of thing. So um, they had this, uh, this layout that was going to advertise baby clothes or, or it wasn't like it was an editorial, you know, to show all oh, baby fashions. I didn't even believe this is a thing, but I think it was in um, Look magazine, which is probably no longer in existence. Oh, my God. Yeah, I know. I'm that old. I frighten myself. <laughs> um, but I don't look it. No, um, God bless. Stay out of the sun, girls. Um, <laughs> uh, so so I think that was the, the whole thing it was like we needed a little money for rent. Dress up Jana in some baby clothes. I, I don't, I didn't, I got to keep the stuff, but I don't have it. I, you know, I, I don't fit that anymore, but it was really <laughs> cute stuff. I got, I had like a bunny suit. Um, uh, and I actually have one of the pictures, you know, framed because it's so silly. And I don't know what happened in the magazine, but one of the funnier, uh, oh. I have some of the contact sheets because that time they printed them out and everything. Um, there's a woman carrying me kind of like an accessory, like she's some kind of like woman on the go. And I'm kind of sideways, you know, like, it, it's really funny. She was like the, the modern woman on the go with, you know, baby in tow with the bunny suit. Right, and right. It's very, because she's not even looking at me. It's like, look what I got, you know, so that was really funny. I think I made the exact amount for the shoot was uh, the entire month's rent. Now, my right. day rate has gone up, thank God. <laughs> um, but I just thought that was so funny. And I, you know, I tell, and then it's funny because later on uh, in, you know, I did some work in advertising and I ended up being the hand model. I don't know. It was just kind of like. Oh my God, that's fabulous. You went from baby model to, to hand, hand model. model. I love it. I yeah. love it. So if you look on, there's a couple of kettles in Bed Bath and I'm, I'm pouring the, uh, the tea in a kettle. It's, it's goofy, but every time they like forgot to book a model or something was like, anybody have hands in here? I was like, I've got hands. <laughs> and it was like free manicure. I'm in. And, you know, a day off work to go shoot the, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, to go shoot uh, at, at a studio. So it was fun. And I just want to point right. out, this is paper because I don't want to hurt any turtles. <laughs> I'm taking it old school. That's it, baby. You go. Right? I love my old school. <laughs> So now, 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 did your mom though? I mean, did you save some of these things? You have like actually a picture of you being the I baby do. model. I do. It's. It, I love that. I've got it framed. It's right. Uh, I, I mean, it's right here. <laughs> it's funny. It's complete with drool. And I, I was born with a full head of black hair, um, so I look like a little monkey, like your little monkey. Oh, my little monkey. <laughs> your little monkey. <laughs> Shout out to the monkey. <laughs> Don't get me started on the monkey. It's very dirty. Okay. okay. <laughs> no, I, I have a clean show, so relatively. Oh, oh, relatively. Okay. I'm a blue little rat bastard. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so now tell me, what's the deal with the Guinness World Book of Records? What that, do you remember I said? Yeah. I can't wait to ask her because I don't know if it was pornographic or not. No, it was totally clean. It was a crazy <laughs> thing. It, well, you know, I wasn't there for the whole thing. I was only there for my <laughs> spot because uh, oh, okay. it was the world's longest running live variety show. And it was um, a couple of years ago at the Metropolitan Room in New York City. Mm -hmm. um, I followed, of course, like, why couldn't I be on with him? But I followed Tony Danza. This is like a theme in my short-lived career. <laughs> I always follow a much more famous Italian person. Another, <laughs> another set I did, I followed uh, Janine Garofalo. Oh, I love Janine. And I was like, oh, you're just bunching up all the Italians. That's what they did. So I followed Tony Danza. I think he went on at like four in the morning. So what they did was that it was a continuous live feed of a variety show. It never like a stopped. telethon. Yeah, like it was a like telethon? a telethon, but we raised no money. Okay. And I'm like, five, five in the morning, I'm like, trying to remember my act. I'm like, ah, you know. But you know what the good thing was? I got parking in New York City. I mean, that yeah, was... Well, it, that made yeah. it all worth it, really. That did. Yes, I agree with you. You'd be like, oh, did you walk in and go, that's all I did. I got parking. I got parking. My day is done. Parallel, that's beautiful. It. I love to <laughs> parallel park. I wish this was like an Olympic sport because I could still, I could meddle. I really? Have a, yeah. And you know what? I test drove a car with the camera that, mm -hmm. that you cheat with. and I, I said, never use that. I never use that. I don't need that. 
I said to the guy, can I shut this off? He goes, no. I'm like, this is why America's stupid. I was like, oh my God, I'm turning it to my parents. <laughs> this is why you're dumb, because you don't use your brain. You rely right. on this nonsense, now you're going to be an idiot. Right, that's so, true. Because yeah. I don't use mine. I mean, I'm so used to doing it. It's like, then I look at it and I get like a little stunat. I'm like, what I the know. Can't we have like, one it's... accomplishment? One thing right. like, I knocked this out of the park. I didn't, t- I, <laughs> if I had to pass my test today, I could do it. I didn't touch that guy. I didn't touch the curb. Right. I'm but legal. you're right. Yeah. So, so we, what, we don't remember. We don't remember phone numbers no. anymore because they're all stored in our phone. But no. we just hit the person's name. I know. It's right. And I, I used to remember it even by the tones. Like it made a little song. I, don't, I can't read music worth the damn. But I remembered like if I dialed it right, you know, it mm-hmm. made this. I was like, yeah, I know I dialed it right because it was like beep, 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 you know, whatever it was. And now you're like. You can't do it. Now everyone's like, no. Siri, play this. I'm just like, come on. I know. I know. And I, I, think I, was, I think I was testing with you the other day. And I, unfortunately, I wind up fighting with my artificial intelligence. Yeah. Because I'll say then. a word. Yeah. Like, and all of a sudden, then Alexa will pop up. And I'm like, no, I didn't ask for you. Why? Shut it, up, hooker. Yeah. Let's talk to you. You. <laughs> you know, it's funny. When I, when I use my GPS from my phone, I occasionally will do that. And, you know, they'll just keep reiterating, you reiterating, you know, like, you know, take the Brooklyn. My favorite was on my old GPS. It would say Brooklyn bra. Like they couldn't finish bridge. It's like Brooklyn right. bra. Yes. Right. I know. I did leave the house with one. Don't worry, mom. Right. And uh, I'm, it's a, br- I bought it in Brooklyn. Exactly. Okay, right. I got it fit from the nice ladies. She fit me. Um, but yeah, I, it's, it's gotten to be like, she'll like harangue me or start nagging. It's like, I got it. I got it. I'm making you left. And I just have to turn it off, you know, and every now and then they'll, it'll just guide you into like a, a brook or a stream, yeah, yeah. you know, like I love that story about the German guy. I mean, it's a little sad, but they're so, they have such an obedient culture, you know, that yes. he sees the train tracks in front of him. The GPS says, keep going. And he gets hit by a train because he, he couldn't use his own brain. And this is, this is why I continue to parallel park by myself. I, I, I applaud you for that. I really do. Cause I do the same. I do the same. <laughs> Honestly. Cause otherwise so you're just going to get dopey. Yes. So I'm going to ask you the obvious question. And I usually ask this obvious question to anyone that's on my show, which is Tutte Jambate. I forgot to say welcome. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. I love the name. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Um, But I always ask this to uh, female guests that are in the entertainment business based on comedy. Um, And it's such an obvious question, but uh, do you still feel that women in comedy are at have have not been able to break that barrier yet that do you still feel that completely okay and and share share your views yeah i um i went out to the aspen comedy festival when it was held in aspen i don't know know where they're doing it now but i went out there years ago i would say it's more than five years and they had a show called and i wrote about it for you know a uh like a newsletter sort of thing. I, I, wrote a, I wrote about my visit to the comedy festival. They actually had a show that night. And I mean, you know, Chris Farley was there. You, you can tell how long ago it was. Um, uh, Steve Martin. I mean, it's a huge festival. There's panels, right. there's stand up, right. you know, there's sketched, all kinds of stuff. Really great festival. And there was one night called Ladies of the Night. That was, that was the showcase for women's comedy. And I, and look, this is in my lifetime. We have the vote, right? I mean, like, what is going on? Can you imagine if you did that to any other group? Right. Ladies right. of the night. So you're of calling, fe- first of all, you're sectioning off female comics, which I think is ridiculous. And that's part of the problem. Absolutely. You make Absolutely. a, you can't ghettoize people and then expect them to make the same money, have the same consideration. It won't happen. Right. I, my head fell off and no one else was, I mean, to me, I would have, I would have walked out. I would have said, if I'm headlining this, you change the name or you put me with the men. I don't need to be off in kindergarten with, and then a disgusting name like that. How about, right. they, they wouldn't call the guys, you know, you know, it's a pimp show. And even so we all know that, that that's not as degrading in the popular culture as calling a woman ladies, a hooker. Right. right. Ladies of the night. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, Stormy Daniels is a porn star. But the customer, he's fine. You know, right. that, that's right. never going right. to change, right? right. Uh, but right. until that changes, I really feel like women are not. That kind of sensibility, like sectioning people off or, um, you know, I think it's slow. But still, look, we've got Jimmy Fallon, you know, Jimmy Kimmel. I love Jimmy Kimmel. 
And they, mm -hmm. they do have female writers and I, and Seth Meyers as well. Yes, and I applaud absolutely. them for really putting them out there. I think, mm -hmm. but at the same time, those are, you know, and I even wrote about this then you've got to be in a suit to tuck everybody in at night with, with late night. And it's, it's across the board. It's even broken racial barriers, but not gender. Exactly. You're absolutely right. I, I, I don't, I don't understand it, and it still baffles me to this day that, yeah. that you know, people will say, oh, you're a comedian, as uh, opposed to a comic. And no one can even pronounce or, that. I know. Right. I can fucking spell it. I can't even spell it. I know. Okay? It's, it's like, like French. Is that French for comedian? Yeah. Comedian. Exactly. Yes. I would have to say comedian. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, God bless right. the French. Right. You, you have to do it like you're doing Pepe Le Pew. Like, oh, exactly. <laughs> I get you now. No, no, no. What? But yeah. I never forget this one guy. Uh, I was I was being interviewed for some some Italian American kind of uh, magazine or article or some shit, and the guy was really nice. And I, I'm sure it wasn't an it was not an intentional thing, but right. I'm sure when it came out of his mouth, he probably went like, "Oh, how stupid!" And, you know. Right. And he said to me, "Let me ask you a question. Would you rather be pretty or funny?" And that's, those are my options? Like, that's yeah. what, Do I get to keep both my legs? Like, what? I know. I was right, like, right. That they're and, mutually exclusive. Is that the right? Like, what? Right. So, in other words, if you're funny, you can't be pretty. And if you're pretty, you, you know what I'm saying? And I right. said to him, I didn't even call him out on it because I was so taken aback. Right. You just don't know whether that, to mm, or go blind. Right? I'm yeah, like, what? Yeah. Yeah. But I remember saying to him that I'd rather be pretty funny. Excellent answer. Good answer, sir. Thank you. Thank good. you. Good hey. answer. Good answer. And I mean, it's fact, true. I think that's a great name for a comedy album, too. Right there. Pretty funny. Yeah. I would right. If that was my review, if somebody said she's pretty funny, I'd be like, I'm, I'll be damn happy with that. And, and just right. in the literal term. Right. Right. Absolutely. But to this day, there was an artistic director that my agent was dealing with uh, in, in booking the show, and it was out of town. And I'm not going to say what city it was in. And she was talking to the artistic director and he said, uh, oh, so like, um, is this show, we were talking about the Italian chicks, comedy right. variety show. Mm -hmm. And, um, and she's telling him about the show. And then he goes, so this show is like, uh, this is like, um, like a girl's night out. And she got so pissed because she's a woman. Hello. Yes. Okay. And she goes, she goes, wait a minute. Let me, let me, let me give you an example. Let's say you uh, booked Louis Black in your, in your venue. Right. And you had a poster of Louis Black up outside. And let's say Johnny and Tony were walking down the street and they saw the poster and they went, oh, oh, man, Mickey, look at this. Louis Black is going to be here, Tony. Come on, we got to go. Let's leave the wives home. It's going to be guys night out. So, so when you have a male comic, right. you mean to tell me only men show up in the audience? Right. No dates. Nothing like that. Like no, that, that no. was like one of the most popular dates to go to a comedy club, like back in the day. Right. Right, right. So it's still, it's still interesting. It's still very, and I'm not, believe me, I'm a feminist, but I'm not an over the board feminist. I'm not a huge feminist. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really give a shit. You want to open my door? Fine. If not, I got hands. You know what I mean? It's not a problem. Right. I, look, I, I think, I, I think you can be a gentleman and you can be a, and a feminist at the same time. It's just about being kind and courteous, right? It, right. You know, it's what you would do for a friend. I've opened a door for a friend. I mean, I'm gay. Me too. You know what I mean? It's just exactly. like, hey, I'm first. I'll do you do you catch the next one. Or, you know, like you could treat your man down the road after you know that he's a good guy or something like that. That's right. Fine. But That's I don't right. think that has anything to do with respect and including people. So I really no. like you know, if you ask a lot of people, they think that we have the Equal Rights Amendment passed. And we don't. Right. Right. And it's a stunner because it's it's what is it, twenty eighteen? For yes. another week or two? And then, and, but you're still fighting over like how much somebody made, you know, exactly. That is crazy. Especially because we spend so much more on ourselves. Right. 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 Takes yeah. a lot of money as, as what Dolly Parton, I loved her. Uh, what she said, takes a, a lot of money to look this cheap. <laughs> right. It's true. Right. Yeah. It takes a lot, you know, we have other expenses and of course, uh, you know, women have kids and men don't. And mm -hmm. that's like a whole, you know, it's a whole other ball of wax. I don't, under, I don't understand how we still don't, don't have that. So I, no. when I hear those types of things with comedy, 
I just think, when is that going to end? You know, when? Yeah. And you look at people like, if, if, talk about being pretty or funny. Betty White. I mean, she Oh, is, my God. And she's like 90-something. 90 90-something, 90 gorgeous. When yes. she, you know, I mean, she's an older woman yes. now, of course. But when she started out, holy cow. And, um, you know, Joan Rivers, she was like holding up late night were it not for all that whole crazy kerfuffle yeah all that nonsense all yes, that you're right bs with johnny carson holding a grudge like really dude i mean aren't you too old for that <laughs> yeah it was the weirdest kind of thing right the very really very was. very strange and i think that kind of uh poisoned the water for a while as far as like late night goes it did i agree i agree so tell me now what's going on with you what are you what are you planning what are you trying to cook up next what i am cooking up stuff? next i'm hoping to i have a bunch of stories that are associated mm -hmm. with recipes growing up most of my stand-up is about being italian american eating being italian american eating some more eating. thinking about food that's what we do, that's what we do. yeah uh, it's and and my argument for that is you would too if your food tasted this good <laughs> <laughs> like there's more Italian restaurants in Manhattan than any other kind of restaurant. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, it's an old fact, but I think it's still true. Um, so what I'm hoping to do is launch my website in, uh, in January or February of next year. Great. And it's going to combine stand up recipes, little blog. Um, I'd also like to sort of promote some of the, the products that I've used in cooking that are really good and, mm -hmm. and help people make more authentic Italian American food and say, Hey, look, we, I don't know about you, but nobody eats garlic bread. Right, <laughs> exactly. There's no yes. soft bread sticks. And if you have a soft bread stick, there's medications for that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's as far as I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, trying to Bravo, clue, people, that was good. <laughs> clue people into like some of the history behind some of the food and that it's not that hard to make authentic foods and, you know, and some of the fun stuff too. Right. So, um, yeah, my cousin and I, we were cooking together. We were making uh, acinetti one night. Um, oh, wow. And it's so good. I did, you know, discover some of the secrets on my own. Okay, the sprinkles don't stick if you put them on way after the frosting. You know, little tips <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you do any cooking for the holiday now or? or... Yes, I am. Uh, I'm going to make an octopus salad probably. That's one of my favorite things while I'm, still, e while I'm still eating meat, fish. Um, that's my contribution because I, I can't do that. I wasn't, wasn't really big on bacala with the salt. My dad didn't. Me neither. I he never, never soaked into that it. Either. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that because I have like, you know, I'll eat just about anything except maybe escarole and bacala because I think the memory <laughs> of it was you're supposed to soak this to remove for the, for the, uh, for the Anglicans out there, you're supposed to, it's a salted fish that you're supposed to soak for about three years before you eat it. Right. To get you the You can kill somebody could, with it. Yeah. You could really put somebody in, in the hospital. Um, and I think that one day my dad didn't soak it and I was kind of like, you know, thirsty. And I was like, that's it. I'm, this is just not worth the trouble. But, but yeah. Let me ask you, let me ask you this one question. What skeeved me out about bacala the most, besides <laughs> that I just didn't like I think maybe I could have liked it, but we soaked ours in the bathtub. Oh, yeah. No. No, that <laughs> so, Italians, you I, know, the old school Italians, they did a lot with the bathtub. Yes. I think that, I, and Peter's going to love this. I think a lamb was slaughtered in the bathtub for one Easter. <laughs> I was not around, thank God. <laughs> um, I think that some wine was made in the bathtub. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And no, but, but you know what's crazy? My grandparents, I don't think they saw a doctor ever, and they lived no, you're... way, way, forget, and they ate whatever they want. That's right. I, you know, I think, well, I think. Again, you also got to think about, you know, being in Europe now versus here. I mean, right. all of our food is tainted and poisoned, really. All of our grains are, which is why Americans are more overweight, because if we were living, first of all, if we were living in Italy, I would just so love that. Okay. You got to go back every now and then. Right. But other than that, the food is perfect. Yeah. There's nothing spoiled. There's nothing tainted. There's nothing sprayed. It's pure. Right. And, the, and, the, and you don't feel like you have to eat a lot of something when it's really good. I exactly. Mean, I, used, I mean, I could pack some groceries for sure. But, right. <laughs> but right. when you have a beautifully made small dish of pasta and it's perfection, you just need that. A little bread for la scapetta. Right. What exactly. More? Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's why I probably exactly. have to marry somebody who's Italian because they're I not going to think you do. 
<laughs> I think you do. I think you do. But I think this is a great idea that you have marrying the comedy and, and the food together, you know? Yeah, I discovered that that's really like, you know, I had some observational humor when I started out. And what I discovered was people were more interested in in just uh, Italian American culture and and the idiosyncrasies of it. Like I was raised to believe that, you know, we invented everything. You know, it's like we've got, you know, Sinatra, Madonna, uh, right. Da Vinci invented the rotisserie, you know, right, exactly. Al Pacino. Like, what did we not perfect? I was you know, right. raised with a lot of pride like that. And you have to be a little right, careful. You don't too. piss too many people off. But then mm -hmm. you stand back and you look at it and it is pretty amazing. Catholic, is. Catholic really Church based in Rome. You know, it's pretty yeah. big. Yeah, it's a pretty big brand. Yeah, it is a brand. Yes, that's a great brand. And I know we're going to upset some people in the Heartland or wherever the, wherever I... the school is with the upside down. The, heart... <laughs> the oh upside down God, candy with cane. With the candy cane. Well, not you disgraziate. Did you ever with these people? Has you need to bazzo? It's too much. It Basta. Is. Is. I, you know what? Uh. Don't homeschool your kids if, it, if you're so offended. You mm -hmm. know, you can send them to private school or whatever. Sure. I mean, I, I, I get it. You don't want to make people feel not included. And they usually have a menorah and there's other recognition of other religions. But, you know, it's America. Right. Like we were, you know, that's, that's the basis of the, of the country. And, you know, we have God is still on the money, right? Uh, hey, that's it, man. Let me tell you, right? And, that, and, and you know, unfortunately, that's where we're worshiping a little too much. <laughs> you're right. That's what happens. That's unfortunate. But you're, you're true in that regard. But, you know, back to your point about the culture and tradition of it all, okay? Um, I so support that because that's what my show is about with the, with the chicks. And it's funny because, you know, I, I always say this as a portion in my act where I start talking about the Italian cookies and the struffelis. As soon as I say the word struffoli, it gets applause. Everybody goes bananas. I've never right. said that. The, where do you go in the world that you could say the name of an Italian cookie and everybody's like, yeah, yeah, struffoli, yeah. Just give it a <laughs> Give it up for Struffoli. Yeah, no, it's yeah. totally true. You have to, you get like, you get an applause break over cannoli or whatever. It's yeah. like a moment of silence. Right. Linguini and clam. Right. Yeah, no, and, and, yeah. and then I do the inverse of that. Like, no one ever is like, oh, you know what I could really go for? Irish food. I got a right, woolly. Right. I got a woolly for some wooly. cabbage. Like, it just doesn't happen. People like, no, oh. it doesn't. You know, you don't, you're not going to have, like, stuffed cabbage uh, delivery at the dorm. It's, it's going to be pizza, even though that doesn't right. qualify as pizza. If you're drunk, True. you do need something. So I, yes, I let it go. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You're right. Well, look, you've been, you've been very charming and amazing. Thank and, you so um, much for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. And if there's anything I can do to support you when you go live with your website or uh, please just, you know, uh, hit me up, let me know, and uh, I'd be more than happy to help you in any way. I, I definitely will. Thank you for doing what you do. It's amazing. Oh, and, oh, and now I'm technologically savvy enough to figure it out. <laughs> Thank God. Please, because you're going to need this with this new thing you're doing. I'm That's telling right. you, it's going to be wonderful. No, completely. So, God bless you, and have a wonderful, wonderful, happy holiday. Bon Natal. Bon Natal to you, too. Okay. Ciao, Bella. Ciao, ciao. Grazie. Oh my God. Oh, thank you, Bruno. Uh, she was just, she was just a delight. She was really trying. And Mike, I'm sorry, Mike, I was in the middle of this conversation and I didn't want to interrupt, but thank you so much for being so supportive, my little Mikey meatball. Um, it's such a crazy world out there, isn't it though? I'm telling you just a crazy, crazy freaking world, but uh, it's, it's our world, right? It's still our world. So I'm going to unplug now because I'm going to take a chance and you should have did that, but I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. What do you say, Bruno? Can you still hear me? Asa, can you hear me okay? Oh, because I just needed to unplug myself from the headphones. It gets me a little crazy after a while. You know what I mean? So, um, next week. Holy shit, chef. My guy, my guy, chef on here, Chef Vincenzo. People, you got to tune in next week. I'm so excited about next week's show as well. We are going to have... Um, I can never say, uh, I will learn how to say Sal's last name by next week. I believe it's Scagliamo. Um, excellent. Thanks, Bruno. Uh, but it, Sal is the owner of Patsy's Restaurant in New York City, and he's also the head chef there. Uh, he does spots on the Today Show, cooking spots about his food. Uh, so he's on Channel 4 occasionally, um, here and there, on and off, and usually during the holidays as well. Um, it's... It's his restaurant has been around. It's so freaking old school that 
Sal, yes, I cannot say his last name of Patsy's. Um, it's so old school that Frank Sinatra and Lana Turner used to sneak in the back and they'd open up this private room so they can go in the back and have dinner, okay? So um, he's just an amazing guy. He's a great chef and he has some very cool old school stories. Uh, and, and this uh, Patsy's restaurant has been in his family since, God, well, he'll tell you that, all right? Scon oh, look at my friend Asa, Scogna Milo, Sal Scogna Milo. I think I did it right, Asa. Thanks. I'm gonna remind me next week. Sal Scogna Milo. He's gonna be on from Patsy's. You would think Patsy's restaurant is his name would be Patsy's, but it didn't go down that way. So thanks for joining Tutta Jambate. And listen, people, uh, it's a holiday season, so come on, you know, clean up, look good, wash your face, and please, this show is sponsored every week by J and Co. Hair Studio in Paramus, New Jersey, right on Route 4. So you know what? If you like my hair, a lot of people say, gee, I like gee, or whatever. You liked it. Well, go there. Natasha does my color, and Angela cuts it. So go in uh, and to uh, J, J and Co. Hair Studio, Paramus, New Jersey. Uh, tell them uh, Boom Boom sent you or the Italian chick. Um, and, um, and men, it's, it's unisex. So, you know, go in, okay? <laughs> but it's, it's a great salon. It's a great studio. Uh, the music is fabulous. The people that work there are really gorgeous as well. So check them out. Uh, so thanks a lot for joining me today. It was a great show, and you people are so amazing. You impress me all the time that you show up. Um, I, I really appreciate that you show up. Um, means a lot to me. And uh, we're going to keep you posted on stuff with the Italian chicks coming up. But in the meantime... <laughs> Oh, my God.